If there's one thing I hate dealing with on track, it's overheating. Not only will it mess up your flying lap, it'll also mess up your engine. And when you're putting 30 pounds of positive pressure through your spoolie boy, things get really hot really fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to address cooling with the nuclear option. Don't ask me if it works. I, mean, I assume it does. I don't know. I just think I've never been in a wind tunnel. This right here is your Bowden Standard K24 water pump. The impeller in here is a little rusty and crusty, but this thing moved water just fine and it wasn't leaking at all. So really this is perfectly serviceable. We can do better. If you remember back to engine assembly, I removed the entire water pump housing and never reinstalled it. After studying the coolant passages on the block, I devised a plan to delete the water pump, thermostat, and accessory belt assemblies allowing me to move to a custom alternate mount and an electric water pump. These delete plates exist off the shelf as well, but since I would likely be modifying these parts anyway, it's easier and cheaper just to start from scratch. Here's my cardboard template, and then here on the bench is what used to be an old wing mount, but I hit a wall at Road Atlanta, and uh, I bent the partner to this over at about a 45 degree angle. So now, this nice thick aluminum is going to become my water pump mount. Slap the intake manifold on just so I could get a better idea of the kind of room I'm working with. And now the plate that I just cut is going to go right there like that. This is going to be the water outlet from the block. And now I have to fit the alternator and my new water pump somewhere in this area. So there should be plenty of room here to work with. Since the alternator has a little bit more restriction on where it can go, I'm probably going to build a mount for that first. Probably just something like here, mount it down here, and then some kind of adjustment option up here, and then just get a belt that'll fit. banged out this alternator bracket. It's obviously nothing pretty, but it's nice and strong, and it's gonna go right there and hold the alternator. Alternator's roughly mounted. Here's the beginnings of my tensioner. And now I'll take the smallest belt that Bando makes, which is a seven Papa Kilo 810, and drop this on. And that's my alternator setup. So I'll have all my tension adjustment through that rod right there. I'll just weld a tab to here to capture the hook so that's secure. And then that tells me exactly how much room I have to mount the water pump back probably right about here is what I'm thinking. And then run cooling hoses out here to the radiator and then into here to the block. I need to take a quick break from doing the water pump and alternator mounting to measure this space and see how big a radiator I can stuff in here. And that means that I need to put the splitter back on, which for me is super exciting because this car has not had the splitter on it in five months. Oh, buddy. Oh, it feels good to have this reinstalled. It kind of...
kind of sort of looks like a car with it. As cool as it is to see the splitter back on, I can't leave it on very long. I take my measurements and then take it right off and get back to welding. <sighs> Let me tell you, if you ever think you're good at welding, then go try aluminum because this stuff will humble you really quick. I mean, it doesn't help that I'm welding on a really low quality aluminum that I don't even know the type, but uh, this is a pain. And I've been doing a lot of aluminum welding. I'm tired of welding on aluminum, ready back to steel, or just not welding at all for a bit. But uh, this is what it is. I got this little bit all glued together and it's gonna go over here. I have the alternator in the farthest up position. So this is as high as it gets for belt changes. And now this is gonna slide right in there and be the inlet to the water pump. So that way it still clears everything. If I went straight up from here, it would run right into the alternator and uh, it's no fun for anybody. So, boom. What I have right here is a Peterberg CWA 400. This is an electric water pump that comes on select BMWs and also you can just buy them in the general aftermarket. This thing is really the cornerstone of my ultimate cooling solution. At the end of the day, I can throw a big radiator in the car. I conduct all the air really well through that radiator. But if I can't move the coolant from the radiator to the engine and back to the radiator quickly and effectively, the motor's still gonna overheat. And these things, they move a lot of coolant and it's also PWM controlled. So this is going to double as my ECU controlled thermostat. The CWA 400 isn't huge, but it does have placement and orientation restrictions that make finding somewhere to put it a little bit challenging. I have to give a huge thank you and shout out to Matt. Some of you might know him as Padlock, some of you might know him as the guy behind Left Lane Designs, but his advice and expertise in the area of cooling systems was absolutely invaluable and saved me from accidentally plumbing the entire system backwards. Yeah, the less said about that, the better. Thanks again, Matt. I need to build a new coolant return line for the hot water coming out of the back of the head. Previously, I had the original K-Power water neck running into a rubber line, running into a hard line, running into another rubber line that then went to the radiator. That means there's a lot of connections, which means there's a lot of possible failure points, and some of the tubing was right next to the hot exhaust. Obviously, that's not ideal. So what I'm gonna do is take that original K-Power water neck that I've already modified and added that rear coolant fill port to, and I'm just gonna weld an aluminum tube to it and run it all the way down under the turbo bits to right about here, which is where the radiator is gonna be. Then I'll just have a single rubber line going from that to the radiator. Should be a lot simpler, a lot stronger, and a lot more reliable. have this extremely long tube welded onto my neck. So now the whole thing's gonna go back here. And boom, that brings my coolant outlet right here, coming all the way down along the block. And then I think I'm gonna add a bung somewhere back here-ish and plumb this line, which is the coolant uh, coming out of the turbo. And just put it right into there. That should be easier than run this line all the way out like it was and putting it into the radiator. On every single K24, there exists that water port. Which is a little bit annoying because it runs right through this port on the intake manifold. Which means anytime you pull the intake manifold, you have to drop the coolant. But since I have an electric water pump, I no longer need the thermostat which means I don't want to have coolant running through that intake manifold anymore. So 
Since I've cut off part of the manifold, this water port needs to be blocked off. Now, one last piece to bring it all together. A honkin' big radiator. Come on, you didn't think I was gonna put a measly Miata-sized radiator in here, did you? That just wouldn't cut it for a car making six times the factory horsepower. This radiator is not exactly bolt-on, however. Both the inlet and the outlet are 2 inch on this radiator, which is a lot bigger than the stock Miata size of just inch and a quarter. Uh, the good news there is that I have my old NC radiator that still has its inch and a quarter inlet and outlet. So since this thing is bent and leaking and has generally been through hell, I'm probably just going to sacrifice it, cut the inlet outlet off, and then transplant them to this radiator. Uh, probably just gonna plate this over and weld the outlet out. And then over here, I think since this location is gonna interfere with the sway bar once the radiator is in its final position, I'll probably just put it down here and that's nice and simple jog to get right to there. And then this radiator cap, uh, I don't need, so I can plate this over and my only radiator cap will be back there. So I finished. <coughs> oh fuck! It's gonna be that guy again. So I finished doing all the welding to the radiator that I needed to, except for the lower inlet port, and I put it in place in the car, and started figuring out the orientation and where exactly I was gonna put it. And then I realized the radiator is not the only heat exchanger in the front. I have an intercooler that needs to go up here too. So I grabbed that out of storage. I put it in. I put all the intercooler pipes in, and uh, it's. It's funny how quickly all the space I have up here just disappears just like that. But there we go. Radiator and intercooler kind of roughed into place. Ideally, I would want to be able to bring the radiator both farther back, closer to the sway bar, and give it more of a downward angle. But over here, we're hitting this intercooler pipe. So I don't know if I want to get so involved that I'm modifying this pipe. I mean, I could cut it here and give it a little bit more of a, an angle here and that would allow me to bring the radiator back about another inch and lay it down some more but I'm not sure yet if I want to get that involved I mean mounting it like this would work but it's not really ideal yeah screw it I'm gonna redo this intercooler piping it's just gonna bug me too much if I do this now in a way that I don't like <sighs> Nothing's ever bolt on. Well, that wasn't nearly as bad as I was worried it was going to be. 
I thought I was gonna have to do a whole bunch of pie cuts in this area, but I was able to get away with just the one cut and then kind of finesse it through there. So that wasn't too bad. Now the radiator has a much better angle and lean to it. I am happy that I took the time to actually redo the piping over there. So now I'm back to where I was. Uh, I can put this lower port in to tie up to there and then build mounts from the radiator to the chassis to actually hold it. And then I think I can fill it, well, no, first I'll need to actually measure my distances here and get hoses for all this stuff. So I kind of fucked up a little bit. I went to measure all my hoses and for some reason I had just assumed that the inlet and the outlet on the CWA 400 were inch and a quarter, like every single other water fitting on this car but they're not they're inch and a half so now i have inch and a quarter going to inch and a half and inch and a half going to inch and a quarter that's really not going to work i could get some adapters to go from inch and a quarter to inch and a half but then i'm adding extra fittings and extra clamps and extra leak points and especially from the water pump to the block I don't even think I have enough room to fit a 90 and an adapter in there. <sighs> I think my best option is just to cut this outlet off and re-weld it as inch and a half and then cut this inlet off and weld it as inch and a half because then I have inch and a half tube to inch and a half tube to inch and a half tube to inch and a half tube. It's all just inch and a half on this side. And since I am tired of cutting aluminum and having to do pie cuts on said aluminum, I just bought an aluminum elbow. That way I don't have to do eight pie cuts. Gotta fill it up with water, see how many pinhole leaks there are in all my welds. Of course what's leaking is gonna be the hardest thing to fix, the water plate. Had to fix a few more leak points, but I think we're good now. I'm gonna let it sit for a few days just to make sure that no leaks just appear. But for the moment, I'm done with the cooling system. Once I have confirmed no leaks, I'll put the splitter back on, I'll put the bumper on, and then I'll build ducting up in here to feed the intercooler and the radiator. But for the moment, I think I'm gonna focus on the rest of the car. I'm not that far away from being able to fire this thing up. I think it's just a fuel system and put an ECU in it and I can see if this thing will still run. Of course there's still some stuff to do in the interior yet. This blanket hasn't been to hide anything. It's literally just been to keep all the metal dust from the cutting out here and keep it from going in here because you know there's kind of not a windshield. But yeah we're Definitely starting to get into the smaller detail stuff. Maybe next episode we can fire this thing up.